Legendary American chess player Paul Morphy was a great lover of the opera and it was during one of his visits to the Paris Opera that he played the most famous game in his career, which is known as the Opera Game. Morphy played this friendly game against German noble Duke Karl of Brunswick and the French aristocrat Count Iswart, who could consult and at the same time get a good view of the Barber of Seville opera buff. On the other hand, Morphy was sitting with his back to the stage, facing opponents totally concentrated on the game. This game was played in 1858 in Paris, and Morphy was playing with the white pieces opened up with e4. Black responded with e5, knight f3, d6. Black is going for Philidor defense and d4 by Morphy. Bishop g4, which is already a mistake. According to modern theory, the best moves are considered to be e takes d4 or knight f6, or black can even play knight d7, but in our game we have bishop g4, to which Morphy responded with d takes e5, and already we can say that bishop takes f3 is forced, otherwise if move like d takes e5, then after the exchange of queens, white is winning upon. That's why in our game after d takes e5 we have bishop takes f3 and queen takes f3 by Morphy. d takes e5 and bishop c4 with a direct mating threat. Black responded with knight f6. I have to tell you that there is a famous video where Bobby Fischer is analyzing this same game and here is what he says. It's funny, I played two simultaneous exhibition games here in Sarajevo and both players played exactly the same queen f6. Maybe they were trying to lose the same way as a joke or something. Now, let's just take a quick look at th those games, how Fischer managed to beat his opponents. Queen b3 was played b6, knight c3, c6, preventing knight d5, and powerful response by Fischer, bishop g5. Fischer calls this a very good move, and I totally agree. The idea is that knight queen takes g5, then bishop takes f7 is coming, followed by bishop takes g8, with a totally winning position. So in the games after bishop g5, queen g6 was played, to which Fischer answered with rook d1. Of course you can't castle because black can win the bishop with a check. That's why rook d1 was played by Fischer. Right now the threat is rook d8 checkmate. Bishop e7 was played by black. Well if knight d7 then bishop takes f7 can be very strong. And then, in the end of the day, this is going to be an easy win in the end game. So, in those games, after rook d1, bishop e7 was played, and after the exchange on e7, Fischer played bishop takes f7, and then announced a check from d8, lured away black king and won black queen. Fischer says both played exactly the same, but different from here. Both lost, of course. The journalist asked, you think Morphy played better than you, Fischer? Well, we both won. So let's go back to our main game, dear chess lovers. So after bishop c4 in our game, knight f6 was played and queen b3 by Morphy with a double attack. Black played queen e7, protecting the pawn on f7, and at the same time Black's idea is that if queen takes b7, then queen b4 check, forcing the exchange of queens. Of course, even in this case, this is going to be winning for white with an extra pawn. White can convert this easily, but Morphy decided to keep alive the queens and after queen e7 played knight c3. Already he blocked this diagonal and wants to grab the pawn on b7. c6 by black, protecting the pawn on b7 and bishop g5. We have a nice pin, and at the same time white is preparing a castling queenside. And now black is in a Tsuktsavank position. Black can't develop his knight because of this queen takes b7, and actually it's difficult to find a good continuation for black. Stockfish suggests moves like knight a6 or queen a c7, but in our game we have b5, to which Morphe responded with a staggering Knight takes b5 move. We have the first sacrifice in our game and bishop takes b5 check. Now if a move like king d8 then white can simply castle queenside with a check 
and then switch the rook into the attack from the third rank. In our game, knight bd7 was played, which looks natural, but anyways Fischer castled queenside. Now he is simply threatening bishop takes f6 and win this knight on d7 and rook d8 by black. Of course, castling queenside is not good. Bishop a6, check is coming, followed by queen b7 checkmate, that's why in our game we have rook d8. And a beautiful exchange sacrifice by Morphy, rook takes d7. Rook takes d7, we have two fatal pins from where there is no escape. And the second rook is coming, intensifying the pressure. Queen e6. In here, of course, a simple bishop takes f6 is also winning, but Morphy was looking for a beauty and he went for bishop takes d7. By giving up the queen, black could prolong his resistance, but in our game, after bishop takes d7 check, we have knight takes d7, which steps into a brilliant checkmate in two. I am sure that in a blink of a second you managed to find the winning move, and that move is an absolutely staggering queen b8 move. We have a queen sacrifice as well, guys. I have already forgot how many sacrifices we saw in this game. White forced black to accept the queen sacrifice, after which we have rook d8 checkmate. This mating pattern is named after this game and is known as an opera mate. Truly spectacular finish, right, guys? In the end, here is a chess puzzle for you, which is taken from a game played by Paul Morphy where the task is to find the winning line for black. It's black to move and I will wait for your answer in the comment section. In the end, here are more suggestions for you. Feel free to check them out as well. I will see you in my next video. Take care.